Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of the Connects Robot Build series. In the last episode, I finished with um, getting this robot arm mostly done. However, I still have to hook up the chains that will actually motorize it. And right now, I have already started on the gearing for that chain. There are going to be three strands of chain, one for each joint of the robot. And let's see if I can get a good view of these gears. So those gears there will slide um, with the robot since they're connected to the frame. And the chain, there are two sets of gears here, one for the, uh, joint number two and one for joint three. Those will come across um, the back on each side and go through these gears, come around, go to there, and then go back around. And when it goes that way, it'll go all the way to the other side and do a similar thing over there. It'll just loop around. And making the chain this way will allow this robot to go back and forth while keeping the other joints stationary if I um, desire that movement. And these gears here, for now, is what I'm going to use to hook it up to the transmission. This right here is just temporary though. How it's going to be is there will be a tower going across here and they will all split off to each of the three transmissions. I was thinking of hooking up the chain to control the first joint right here in the front. I'm not sure if I will actually do that, but I was thinking of having it continue across here and go around the tower and it will be below these two um, loops of chain. It works out pretty well because the first joint is the chain on the bottom, the second joint is in the middle, and the third joint is on the top. And maybe you can see the gearing better from this angle. That right there is the third joint, and that in there is the second joint. I decided to make the chain for the first joint be in the back instead of the front just because it was easier to loop it around. So it starts right here and it ends on the other side down there and it will come around and go on this bottom set of gears right here. So around there and around there and back around here. And there's something similar on the other side. So it's really nice that I was able to line all these gears up because it'll make it look a lot neater in the end. What I'm going to do now is get the chain hooked up and start testing each joint with this um, control module here. And that's not how it's going to be at the end of course, but I just want to test out and see how accurate um, each joint is. All of the chain is hooked up, and I guess I will show each joint moving separately for now. This here, the one on the top, is the third joint, so you can see that going up and down. This one operates a lot more smoothly than I was expecting, so I'm happy about that. Next is the second joint, and that is the one in the middle. And there it is moving there. What I'm going to have to do though is fix this to where this chain no longer gets stuck down here because right now it just um, hangs down a little bit too much and it gets uh, the pins get caught around there so I'll have to put some sort of rail to prevent that. And the first joint is on the bottom and when that one is moving and the other ones aren't moving all the chain moves um, with it and again right now it's not really able to move right because of that getting stuck as you can see there okay now there is a rail down here which prevents that chain from getting stuck and it moves a lot better now i'm going to have to work on adding friction to certain things like the third joint because it tends to uh drift downwards like that when this is moving but that shouldn't be too hard to do. And that also applies to lots of the other joints. And right now it's just unable to move because it's running into that. 
I know I said I would test each of these joints out on this control module, but I think that's kind of pointless only because I would have to build a lot of stuff and then take it apart later. So I think what I will do now is start replicating these modules so that I will have three in total, and then I can hook them all up to over there and test it out as a finished product. I forgot to mention this portion in the back which keeps the chain aligned and it keeps it from sagging too much. This uh, span right here is so long that without this it would um, bend down a lot and that would mess it up at the gears. This whole thing doesn't have to be attached to the robot. I just made that for ease of construction and so I wouldn't have to make the chain come all the way out to here and have a bunch of these things um, on the base, even though it probably would be better to do it that way. But I might do that later because this right now seems to work pretty well. And that is what it looks like when it's in the middle. To build the rest of the modules, I'm just taking the first one and copying it twice. So there's the middle one and there's the last one. And the hardest part is, of course, going to be all the stuff that is hardest to see. So that's like the transmissions and all that, but I almost have that finished. And I also have the towers done right now without the chain. Everything is almost finished. I just have the control panel to finish up. But I just wanted to explain um, why I have these things offset like that. So the reason I originally did that is so the chains could come out from here and go straight out. So that one would go like that and that one would come out here. But I decided now to have the chain go up and over. And the reason I still have them offset is because it does save space and allows them to be a lot closer together in that direction. One of the things I still need to do though is secure these link just a little bit because this one for example is three red rods long and we don't want that shaking at all. So I'll probably just make supports like that going all the way down on all of these. Another thing I haven't shown yet is how I decided to hook up the erase module to this main control and all it does is go to here and attaches to the same rod that this one attaches to and so all six of these inputs go at the same time. And I don't know if you could see that very well but um, that was everything going all at once. So that will be a nice thing to have, just one lever to control all of those, and that will be what makes the robot go into writing mode. The control panel is finished, and I have also strengthened all of these linkages right here, especially the longer ones. And I kind of redid this one right here that goes to the transmission. It just looks a lot better right now than it used to, and that is how it hooks up back there. Next what I'm needing to do is, um, I still need to have the chain in these towers, but first I'm going to extend them to be 6 feet tall, like I said I would do earlier. So right now I have the tops taken off, which are right there, and it'll be a lot easier to extend them if the tape isn't on them yet, or else it would do weird things like that. The towers are finished being extended so they are six feet tall now and now I will have to put the chain on and that might take a while because it's a pretty repetitive process. I have two of the towers finished but it's starting to get so repetitive that I'm getting sore from making all the little pins on the tape so I think before I do that tower I'll take a break from that for a while and what I will do now is hook this linkage right here up to be a lever on the front of the control panel around there and so I have to make something that goes back through here probably through that area and then goes up to the lever on the other side and that lever will be the main um, control for whether the robot is in write mode or read mode. 
I said that the linkage would be going up front, but I actually found a way to put it inside of the tower around all the other linkages. So you can see it right there, and that's it moving. Right now I have it disconnected just so I can show it. So it goes through there, like that, and it uses a connection similar to these right head connections right here. So that goes up the middle of the tower. And then it goes over to this lever right here in the front. And like I said, this position will be when you're running the robot normally and when you want to write a new program, you'll push it down like that. And since this also disconnects the motor from the transmission, I can also use this lever as an emergency stop switch, which is nice because if I'm somehow having a problem, I can just quickly push it down like that to turn the robot off. And that's also why I made the down position be right mode because it kind of makes more sense that pushing it down will turn everything off. I've got everything hooked up, so let's see what it looks like. It might be kind of hard to film everything. So that was switching everything into programming mode, and that's how far down it goes. And there's it connected down there. And that's putting it back into um, running mode. Right now I'm deciding on where to put the robot arm and this is just a piece that um, came off of it that used to be back there and that's how I'm storing it to save space. But anyway, we're going to have the first set of gears right here and that'll be for the first joint and that's so that it lines up with that right there. And then the second joint will be there and the third will be there and the other chains will just go back as far as they need to to reach that spot. I've decided to put the robot this way just because it saves more space. It will only come out to about um, right here, the tower portion. I decided not to have it inside of here because um, there's not enough height with the way the robot is right now. That was the plan with the original um, way that I built it, but since I redid that I'm going to have it along the length of the control modules. The chain attachment points are finished, so we have one there and the others are underneath. Right there and over there. And those will go down to the transmissions. I'll probably change the look of this a little bit just because it looks kind of uh, messy with the way the um, all of the supports are. So I might kind of cover it up a little bit. So next, I will get the chain ready and attach everything up. All of the chains for the transmissions are hooked up. And they use wheels down here because I'm actually running out of the red gears. I have about 12 left, so I would like to preserve those as much as possible. And I also made these things have a little cover around them just so it would look a little bit better. I think it looks um, more neat than just having the chain floating uh, down there. And there's going to be a panel right here, so all of this stuff will be hidden in the future. I have also went ahead and attached these towers together, so now they act as one unit and it's really strong because of that. So there's one here and a frame back there for uh, both of the sides. Since I'm finished with these chains, I think now is a good time to start testing the individual control modules because I haven't done that yet. And I'm going to do that before putting the robot um, where I want it because it'll be easier to reach these reed heads for making adjustments. And the adjustments I'll probably have to make is to this rod right here. I have all the tapes at the same level and that just means that the connector that marks the beginning of the tape, they're all lined up at the top. So this will be the start of the program. And right now I am just going to program the same movements on all of them. And what I did 
for the first step is I just made the pin go in that direction. Maybe you can see it way in there. I won't try to zoom in too much. And I'm just going to test out how each of these moves compared to the one next to it and make sure that they're all uh, pretty much uniform. I've gotten all the motors hooked up and like I said earlier these two motors are pointing upwards and this one is to the side just because it goes a different direction than the others. One problem that I am anticipating is these motors look like they go slightly different speeds so I'm wondering if that will make these tapes be out of sync after a while but let's turn them on and see how this works. Right now it is still in programming mode so it's not doing anything. Just um, for the record I have all these tapes at the same level so we have the start of the program marker right there on all of them. That way we can see um, how different all the speeds are. So let's switch it to running mode. Okay, everything's still moving. Kind of looks like that the pins, even in the neutral position, are kind of hitting that which shouldn't be happening. And for some reason, they're um, still in that position. I'm not really sure why, but here's how fast the outputs move. It looks like the ones that are trying to switch it back this way aren't really working as well. And I think the same goes for that one. That test did not go very well, not only because of the reed heads acting weird. Um, the motors are also very different speeds because this piece right here is at that point, and on the other two tapes, I don't even know where that is. So I was expecting it to be off a little bit, but if we can't even see where it is um, on this side, then that means the motors are very different speeds. What I'm probably going to have to do then is make all of these tapes operate just from one uh, motor, and I might be able to combine motors, um, but I'll go over that later. That way the tapes will always be synchronized, which is very important for the robot to remain accurate. I changed the rods here to just be yellow rods instead of what they were previously, which is this thing. It doesn't really make much difference though. Um, I'm probably just going to have to redo the reed heads completely just to make them work better. It's still kind of annoying that we can get that one back there working perfectly and then have the identical ones still be different for some reason. But that's just kind of the way Kinex is and I'll have to work with that. I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. I know there are a lot of things on it that appear broken, but I'll have to get those fixed next time. And um, like I said, I'll have to make the motors all um, combined into one motor, and I'll have to redo the reed heads a little bit. After that, I should be able to hook the robot up to here and actually have the arm running, and that will be when I do uh, most of the tests. Another thing is I'm pretty much run out of the silver spacers right there, so hopefully I can get the rest of the systems to work without them. And I still have some blue ones left right here, so that might be enough. I still have one more small system to put near the top of the towers for tape synchronizing, but I'll talk about that next time. I'm pretty sure the episode after this one will be the last one, because I don't really have much more to do besides those things and putting paneling everywhere. So thanks for watching this episode, and I will see you next time.